Yeah. Are these your own special shoes? Yeah. Oh, they're so cute. Oh, I love how they shine. Yeah, that's the new shoes, you heard me? <laughs> Aren't they cute? They're cute. So, what's up, Percy? <laughs> See, there you go again. There you go again. I thought we was going to have some fun this time. Okay, we want to have fun if I can stop staring at the diamonds in your teeth. When the last time you kissed a man with gold teeth? I told you never. Huh? I told you I never have kissed a man. Well, except for that one homeless guy once. You ain't going to give me no kiss then? We're going to change that. Come on. Are you really going to get that? You're going to do it. I want to do it, and you don't. Uh-uh. Look where the lipstick went, because you turned your head at the last minute She got again. scared, for real. Uh-uh. My husband will kill me. No, Last more. time I had Gary right. Shandling on and I gave him a big old kiss and I went home and my husband, he said, if you kiss another guy on that show, you're going to have trouble. <laughs> I think it's going to be all right. <laughs> For real. I would kiss you, though, if I wasn't married. Act like you ain't married. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I do have several personalities and I can tell my husband it was just a psychotic break. <laughs> God knows I've tried that one before. But look at my new ring. Oh, you can't you top that. Yeah, it's pretty. You, you, you out there. Isn't that great? Yeah. You getting your shine on for real. Yeah. I need to get my shine on for real. That is so true. <laughs> that is so true. I mean, spiritually, that, how much money are you worth? Who are you working with? <laughs> <laughs> Almost. I've been working at it. You know, I was, like I say, you know, I started from nothing and, you know, I came a long way. I just get on my knees every night and thank the man for giving me this opportunity. Yeah. You know? I want to talk about that. Yeah. Um, I really want to talk about that because I really think that that's just so special about you that, you know, you started from under wherever. Yeah. You, you weren't on even ground. Oh, no. You had to no come up a walk. No at all. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like... Five dollars was a lot of money at one time, you know, ten dollars, a hundred thousand. I think all, all the kids out there that, that want to make it, you got to start from somewhere, you know, and everybody won't be a million, everybody can't be a million, everybody got to be the best at their own world. You know, we, we lived in the ghetto and we stayed in the ghetto, but my parents made the best out of what we had. We wouldn't try to work, live like the other people in Beverly Hills, you know, man, we did our thing and we said, we're going to make the best out of what we have, and I think anybody out there that's trying to get to the top, you got to start from the bottom and work your way up. Don't just look at the top and say, that's where I want to go at. Isn't that true? People are, like, forgetting that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, I think what it is, everybody get caught up into this Hollywood thing where they say, mm -hmm. oh, I, wanna, I want the Rolls Royces, I want the, the big houses. And, you know, you got to start small. You got to start from the apartments, move your way up, rent, lease, buy. You know what I'm saying? You can't just come straight out and say, I don't have no way of income and think I'm going to be you know, on top, you right. know, and I, I think it's hard work. If you earn something, you can hold on to it long, and I think that's what the difference with No Limit and what our music is, we earned it. You know, a lot, anybody get a hit it, record. Earning it is, is, that is such the thing. It's like a generational thing, I think, because, like, my kids, I'm like, I'm trying to teach my kids about how, I mean, they're going to get so mad at me for saying that. Yeah. <laughs> but you try to teach your kids about earning stuff when stuff, whether it comes hard or it comes easy, yeah. you still have to earn it, right? Well, I think if you earn it, like I said, you can hold on to it long because anybody can get something. And, uh, in this business, in my business, I mean, you know, a lot of people get hot, a lot of people put a lot of hit records out. But the thing different with us is we're not trying to make hit records, we're trying to make a corporation. So, you know, sometimes it, in any business, in, in Wall Street, it go up and down, up and down. But when you earn something and you hold on to it and you work at it and you got soldiers around and you're you about to survive and you're about to struggle, you can stay on top forever. Now, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, let's talk about the struggle, though. Why? I don't want to ask him that yet. <clears throat> now, listen. What's the struggle? Let's talk about that. Well, you know, the struggle where I come from is like you could be uh, a victim of your own environment. You know, I come from the ghetto. I come from the streets, and I could have went either way. Well, you know, I had my homies hanging on this corner, and I had to go to the school on the other corner, I'm like, man, I got to get through these guys just to get to school. And I'm thinking to myself, how I'm going to please everybody. Then I came to another conclusion, I got to please myself. You know, I could care what corner they hanging on. I'm about to go to school. I'm about to be the best person I could be. And hopefully, 
whenever I get to that point, then I could go and excel and do something for me and my family. So it's just about being able to get through the peer pressure and saying, you know, you're in the ghetto, you don't have to live like that. I mean, when I was in the ghetto, people thought I would never lived in the ghetto because of the way I carried myself. There was like something special about this guy. He could play basketball. He good in school. He gonna be something. And the guys in the ghetto tell me, oh, if you don't hang out with us, then you ain't nothing. You know, and I had to get through that struggle saying, you know what, forget them, I'm about to do what I got to do because I'm looking at the big picture and I could change this world, I could change this world for me and my family. You know, <laughs> you know, it, it, that's such an awesome, positive way, but you know, it's the truth, like whatever corner you're walking by, yeah. there's two kinds of people hanging on every single corner, it's just the ones you see, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the thing is, you, you can't get caught up with the people that's hanging on there. You know, like, when I lived in the ghetto, I wasn't saying, oh, I'm mad at God because he put me in the ghetto and I'm poor and I can't never have it. And I looked at it as a good situation saying, you know what, I know how I feel to be poor. One day I'm going to know how I feel to be rich. So, that's what we have to be like now uh, in uh, the world, don't we? Uh, well, I think a lot of people just want to win, but you got to know how to lose, too, to be able to win. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. You are such a god. You're so smart. Is your mother so proud of you, I bet she just can't believe it? <laughs> nah, she's pretty, she pretty proud of me, you know, I mean, we lost a lot, you know, we lost a lot, and uh, like I said, we get on our knees every day and we thank God for it, I mean, I got a lot of friends that didn't make it to this, you know, my own, my, even my own brother, I mean, how much money I make in the world, I could never bring him back, you know, my brother got caught up in the streets, and, and he died out there in the streets, so, you know, now I get on my knees every night and try to figure out a way that my mom don't have to go through that type of stuff again and you know our family don't have to go through that so you know with me and my brothers we got together and we say you know what let's do this music stuff and let's show the world what's really happening we ain't gonna hold nothing back we're gonna give them the real you know and that's what my music is about it's, it's just living on through my brother and showing people in the world that you know what it ain't just about the money no more you know we in this we in this for a reason because we got a life that we can never get back NFL. You were going there last time you were here, but what happened? You the get NBA. fired? Not nah, the MC. There you Whatever go. Whatever it is. I don't there know. Some sports thing. <laughs> See, the NBA. I don't know anything about See, sports. See, what, what happened was, you know, like, you know, by me coming from the rap business, people didn't know that I came from the rap business. And, you know, I mean, all the other people know me as a basketball player. I mean, from Jason Kidd to everybody. I grew up with those guys I played ball with. By me being Master Peter Rapper, a lot of GMs had to look at me like, oh, this guy a rapper, you know, what is he gonna come in here with an AK or whatever? You know, <laughs> so they had to get to know me, you know. So I didn't but mind. But you were going gonna to... go somewhere and play some sport yeah, last I, time you were here. Did you get I, kicked out or what? What happened? I, 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 See, there you go again. No, I didn't really know. Come you didn't do it. Nah, I, I played on the team and I made the last cut. You know, uh, oh. they promised another guy a contract, and you know, it's a system. So I'll be that this year. I'll be that this year. Are you gonna still try to do it, or yeah, you yeah, are? Yeah. You're not gonna give up. You're not gonna go. Hey. Nah, I ain't gonna, gonna give up till I make the team. I come back on the show and tell you I made the team. Yay! That's great. When we come back, it's Master P and the 504 Boys. Yeah! Well, we're back with Master P and the 504 Boys. That was so fun. So now we're going to um, say your name or your guy, identify yourself, yeah? I'm the one they call Mr. Mr. Magic. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the 504 poor boy crazy, you heard me? We know you. Master P, you heard me? <laughs> C. Murder, I want to say what's up to my boy, Matt. Silk and Shaka, you heard me? Uh, now, um, who's related to you here? This is my brother, and this is my brother. Oh. And you're the older brother, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two younger brothers? Yeah. What do you think of your big brother? He's great. You're the man. That's the man right there. Be cold with yeah. it. That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. the man right there. Now, 504 stands for, um, tell us. The area code in New Orleans. Where you know, that's where, that's where we're from. That's where we grew up. <laughs> yeah. I love New Orleans so much. Where did you grow up there? You probably ain't been in our neighborhood, but we grew up in the Calio <laughs> Project. Oh. Yeah, you been there before? Yeah, I went all over New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all over there. New Orleans. I love New Orleans. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's cool. The music there is Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, incredible. it's a real, real fun place. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of tourism down there, mm -hmm. the Mardi Gras, and I think there's a lot of excitement. And 
about us putting New Orleans on the map with our music. Uh, New Orleans is a great monument for everything. And I think what we're trying to do is build a direction so all the kids can have a foundation to say, you know what, this is where I want to be at. This is a great place, and that's what we represent in the 504. Yeah. It, that's cool, and it, it is a great place. Yeah. Well, you know, everybody got their time. You know, Roseanne, I mean, it was New York got their time mm -hmm. with the music. West Coast got their time with the music. And we figured it's time to put the South on the map. And, you know, we coming together with everybody. That's right. We got Snoop. We, we signed some East Coast mm -hmm. groups. So, I mean, we taking it to a whole nother level. Now, am I going to be in the, on, am I going to make a rap record for you? Because you know I'm a poet. And you know I want to be in the rap area, you know. All right. We because gonna... it's the last free speech art form. Oh, yeah, it is. I mean, people don't understand. Rap music is a way to really tell your side of the story. No holds bond. And uh, if you want to make a rap record, I might see what I can do for you, Wody. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Because, you know, I have to say what I have to say. And, you know, you keep on getting censored in the regular government. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you got to learn how to say you heard me. You heard me. You heard me. You heard me. All right, there you go. There now, you go. that's going to make me honorarily Southern. Yeah, I mean, you got to imagine, you're going to be the only female rapper that got her own talk show, and you be, you heard me? You heard me? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That is right. And Ben Yates, what about those crazy donuts they got down there? We'll make sure you get some of those, too, with your contract. We put that in the contract. I've got to have those every morning. Okay. Oh, my God, the food there is so good. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Why is food so good there? Creole. People, yeah, Creole. Creole, we like a lot of spices, a lot of things. I love that. You know what I'm saying? So and that... Tabasco comes from there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We like our food all hot. Icing, you know what I'm saying? That, of course I know what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> you hear me? You hear me? <laughs> now, who, your name's what? C. Murder. What'd you name yourself C. Murder for? Uh, you know me. I grew up in the Project Calio. You know, you seen know, a lot of it. I've seen a lot of it. So, you know, I just... Oh, it makes me so sick. Yeah. It How old were you when you saw your first murder? <laughs> Probably about 10. Oh. Uh. Yeah, it's real though, you're dead. You learn from it. You What'd learn. you learn? Being you tenuous. learn not to be in those areas in them type of situations. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a crazy world we're living in, huh? Yeah, it inspires you to get out. Yeah, it, I hope it inspires you to get out. That's yeah. why I'm here now, you're dead. Yeah. Now, why, why do you have teeth just like your brother? That's my brother, my inspiration. What he do, I gotta do. See, he on the right track, I'm on the right track. Yeah. But he's like one above you because he's got the bottom ones too, but you yeah. don't have the bottom. Well, see, the thing is, down south, like gold teeth and all that is like a trend. It's like our people started that. It's like our inheritance. So, I mean, my grandmother got gold teeth. Yeah. So the thing is, you can't judge every book by its cover. You can see a guy with gold teeth uh -huh. or a rag around his head. You might think, oh, he's a problem child. I mean, you have cats running around. I always thought it just meant rich. <laughs> to have gold all over your teeth with a diamond in it, that means rich. Yeah, that's <laughs> days, back in the days. It's a day. down south thing, you know. We, we, we come from the mid of King Tut and all that type of stuff. That's right. Look at mm. King Tut. He was yeah. covered in diamonds and gold. Yeah. And everyone's after him. The police him. never stopped him, though, huh? Nuh-uh. Yeah. They never pulled him over. <laughs> that's what I'm... That King Tut. Tell me about your new movie. Well, I just did a new movie with Nicolas Cage called Gone in 60 Seconds, so it's going to be a real blockbuster for us. Oh, yeah, Nick, Nicholas Cage is a real great actor. You know, I had fun working with him, and that's taking my acting ability to the next level. I also yeah. had one of my homeboys, Andy Boswell. He was in the movie with me, too, you know. That's cool. Yeah. When is it coming out? Oh, I think June 8th. That's cool. I'll have June to go 8th. see it. Yeah. I love Nicholas Cage, and I think you're, you're supposed to be good in it. Yeah. You might be a star. You want me to show you my acting? Yeah. Give me a kiss. Okay, but you're not going to turn at the last minute. You Come know in, you are. Okay. Yeah, you can. That is not a kiss. Oh, last minute again. Now don't be looking for me every week talking about you need that again. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Who, which one of you gets the most attention from girls? Silk. Silk. Yeah, that's the lady killer. That, yeah, the la you're the lady killer? I'm, I'm just silk. He might be paying him no, Roseanne. I don't oh, know. That's, 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 all, that's all I that's hate. Good, you know. oh, <laughs> well, you never know because, you, I mean, to me, you look like you're 12 years old. See, that's yeah. why you get him. Oh. Because they think he's young and innocent. Nah, you know, he like... Don't he, let the smooth face fool you. Know? <laughs> How old are you? 
are you? 49. <laughs> uh, 49. All right. Now, am I doing a commercial or something here? I love when my staff just stands around staring at me. <laughs> well, like, I know what the hell's going on. <laughs> we'll be right back. Woohoo!